In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to get all up in the amperes, and we're going to talk a little Tiger Lake coming up next. Could you guys hear that? Could you hear my phone? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had all kinds of background noise. My feed coming through here. Oh, boy. I'm trying. I'm trying. But, hey, look at us. We're back. Welcome back to yet another episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Dave Altavilla. With me is my compatriot, partner in crime, and otherwise Italian brother from another mother, Marco Cipetta. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, man. I think like you, uh, I'm feeling the beating that we've taken the last couple of days right now, but we're going to power through and have some fun on the cast. Right, baby? Indeed. <laughs> we must kick back, relax, and talk tech. It has been relentless this week. I don't know who decided that all the important stuff had to happen this week, but we were called to many a meetings from not only Intel and NVIDIA, but lots of other places. So, um, yeah, man, no rest for the wicked, weary, or whatever we are. I think we're wicked and weary, probably, right? Uh, yeah, I think that <laughs> that probably works. <laughs> Chris is here, but he's going to remain a silent partner today. He's behind the dials. You notice we've got some fancy lower thirds, huh? Look at those. Marco designed those this week. Are you, are you liking those, folks? Nice, clear text, all modern looking. Yeah, give us some feedback on that stuff because it was totally an experiment because I was bored with the other ones. This not necessarily these may not be any better. So definitely let us know. There you go. Trying to look pro as much as we can for y'all. Um, but lots going on in the news um, this week as we roll up to the um, to the Labor Day weekend. Man, uh, short week, but packed with stuff uh let's talk about a few headlines in the news and then we'll get to the main events there are two of them they are going to be deep dives and that's amp here and tiger lake which we got a a, a big uh drinking from the fire fire hose shot of information today but uh, let's talk about a couple of things um microsoft this was interesting crossed the wire uh actually last week uh microsoft boldly outs DirectX 12 uh, Underbar 2, feature support for AMD, Big Navi, Intel, XE, HPG, and Qualcomm GPUs. Um, what was interesting there was that, th yes, they came out with, here's the DirectX 12 2 feature set. And, uh, oh, by the way, all these guys are going to support it. And so, you know, by association, you know, giving us, um, you know, a flavor that uh, DX12 features that are, that are built in uh, to that feature set including ray tracing, including things like variable rate shading, all the, the, the big players and Qualcomm future uh, products uh, will support it. Um, Marco, thoughts there? I, I know you stumbled across this, and then Brandon, did Brandon f flesh this out? No, Nathan, Nathan, no, Nathan Ward. Yeah, Nathan fleshed this one out for you, um, but it caught your eye. Why? Yeah, I thought it was interesting because it was th the thing that caught my eye specifically that made me say, oh, wait, this is interesting information was the VRS tier one, tier two support. So Intel had disclosed that XELP, the first XE series GPU coming in Tiger Lake, would support uh, variable rate shading tier one. But DirectX 12 uh, 2 calls for tier 2 VRS. So for Microsoft to say a future roadmap Intel GPU has VRS tier 2 support, it's something beyond XELP, which is most like likely whoa, XP HPG, the high-end enthusiast GPU. So did did they say kind of got, did they say right. future or did they actually say a a XPG? I thought they maybe even named XPG. No, no it says future. It, it says future, roadmap. Right. Yeah, it was an yeah, Intel roadmap. roadmap GPU. Yeah. So yeah, all that, all, all that, um, all those, you know, top end features, variable rate shading, and the tier level specifically, which gives you, um, you know, better performance um, for uh, for high resolution gaming and you know texture. Uh, conservation of, of, of pixel rendering um excuse me um yeah good good to to see it surprised it came from microsoft but uh, the cat's out of the bag there a little bit and uh you know we knew that um you know next generation navi and certainly rdna2 in xbox series x was going to support ray tracing um now we know you know big navi has got that that was obviously went on record before but we're also getting a a flavor for what what big navi can do for for variable rate shading as well so huh 
Interesting. Yeah. Anything else to add before we skip on to the next one? Well, we've got KW in the chat saying, you know, Intel was silly not to support VRS tier two like NVIDIA has done since 2018 and with Turing and Ampere. But, you know, uh, AMD doesn't support tier two with Navi either. Yeah. So, like, this is our DNA too. It's it's next gen. So yeah. it's 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 good to see all of the next gen GPUs supposedly will be aligning with that feature set, which is good for developers because they can say, "Hey, let's support all this cool stuff," and it's going to work across all these platforms. You know. Yeah, and, and Blackhawk uh, Nathan actually chiming in Qualcomm VRS question mark. Yeah, that's that's what it's saying basically. Qualcomm VRS uh, support um, and tier tier two support and. Yeah, if you think about it, especially on mobile platforms, variable rate shading, you know, uh, minimizing shader um, operations in certain regions of the screen that don't need that kind of detail, it makes a lot of sense, especially for mobile platforms, um, but certainly helps on any platform. So good stuff there. Um, let's, uh, let's talk real quickly about something we uh, looked at from the good folks at DJI, the Mavic Air 2. Took us a while to get this review out the door. Um, we, we got our unit in late, but um, it was nice to experience it. I'll drop the review here in the, in the chat. Uh, the Mavic Air 2, Brandon Hill, uh, who is our resident um, drone expert, he's got a Mavic, uh, Mavic 1, actually thought this was an impressive machine, to be sure. Um, I guess sort of the overriding um, you know, takeaway for, for Brandon was thing flies almost on its own. I, mean, I think he, I think he coerced his son, probably didn't take a lot of effort to do this to get him to an eight, an eight year old to, to fly this thing with little, little assistance, op, uh, object avoidance, obstacle avoidance was solid. <laughs> he didn't go crashing this I don't know, $800 drone into uh into anything. So yeah. And of course, um, that amazing gimbal with 4k 30, um, video, um, uh, sh shooting and, you know, great, great camera shots as well. Have you, have you played around with any of these Marco? Um, do you, do you drone at all? I've got a Mavic mini love it. And it's quick and easy. Yeah, no, nothing at all that I personally have except for a really, really old, I want to say Parrot drone that came with the NVIDIA Shield handheld device. You know, it was like one of the early demos um, for using the, the Shield. But uh, I had a, I talked a buddy into buying a DJI. He's a home inspector, and he needed something to be able to inspect roofs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, man, that And he, he loves it. He's like, oh, my God, I don't have to get up on the ladder. It saves him so much time. <laughs> yeah so check that out on the site um again you know mavic mavic air 2 has been out for a while but uh, we did dive in deep we've got some sample footage we've got some still shots we've got our evaluation and uh we recommend it did we recommend it or did we approve it i think we may have just approved that's hot hardware approved no recommended recommended wow there you go. so there you go um and uh, yeah let's let's talk about one more thing before we dive into tiger lake and ampere let's talk about this thing that just crossed the wire actually this morning and this is team groups uh, they target data center uh, data hoarders excuse me it's not data center with with massive 13 terabyte qx consumer ssd now team group has been coming on strong lately and um, interesting that uh, this is clearly a consumer targeted drive. So SATA drive. Um, and so, you know, you're limited by the SATA interface there. 500 uh, megabytes a second read write probably is where we're going to end up with this thing. But a huge amounts of capacity uh, looks like about 25 cents a gig. I know, you know, the folks at, uh, at, at team group, Marco, what do you think about these guys? Are they, are they worth, worth trusting with your, delicate bits <laughs> yeah man yeah absolutely they're they're like one of the new hot enthusiast you know memory and storage guys and like just the fact that this even came out you know like you can get away with using mm -hmm. I, I believe this is quad level cell obviously it must be quad level cell uh, nand in the device because you know the sata interface you could saturate it with you know generations old controllers so yeah man you might as well get these massive capacity drives that's huge like yeah, that's a massive SSD. I mean, the price is going to be high because it's such high capacity. And, you know, you, you can obviously get a hard drive for, for much less. But if you want, like, no compromise, super bulk storage, you, that is, that's awesome. Man. <laughs> Why not drop a pair of these into a NAS, RAID 1 them, and yeah, you get a right? great file server, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would spend that cash for NAS and be limited by my network performance. That's true. That's true. Well, I mean, yeah, 500 megs a second. I don't know. I mean... Trying to think what what uh, yeah these days you you're really not going to tap that too much, 
Yeah. But that I you know the nice thing and 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 what I stick stick with on SSDs is you know non-mechanical solid state reliability, you know and I mean yeah, we 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 used to worry about SSDs in the beginning and and their reliability for you know they don't they don't just go um quietly, they go all at once and crowbar all your data. But that's not the case anymore. And there's pretty damn good reliability. So thoughts? Yeah. No. No. Am I, I mean, am I, I, I talking I, sunshine and rainbows or what? <laughs> no. I mean, like it's it would be awesome to have the lower latency. You would need you know a fast t- ten gigabit uh, internal network to, to enjoy it in, it in NAS. You know, you wouldn't even saturate it. You know, but right. um, it, it still would be nice to have the low latency and basically the no noise out of your NAS, except for just the single fan. When you have a NAS with, you know, four or five hard drives spinning, you hear those suckers now, you know, that high pitched yeah. whine is very annoying. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if I, uh, if I would drop the 8K <laughs> necessary for a 15 terabyte RAID 1. Yeah, is that what these <laughs> things retail for? I didn't do the math. Yeah, I, think I guess it's like that... 4Gs, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, all right. I guess, uh, you know, if you're in Ballerville, that might be an option, but maybe not. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the main event. Let's uh, let's talk about um, Ampere from NVIDIA. NVIDIA Ampere GeForce RTX 3090, RTX 3080, and 3070 debut with killer gaming performance. We tend to use the word killer once in a while around here, and it's when we're so impressed with perceived performance, promised performance, that that we just dub it, um, you know, some sort of lethal weapon. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Initial thoughts on Ampere? I mean, we we got a, a pretty good dose from Jensen Huang on the debut here at, at, in the keynote, but you know, honestly, a little bit more high level intentionally by Vi- Nvidia. I know we're going to get a deeper dive shot, you know, under the hood of Ampere in in days to come, but. Intentionally high level, more talking about performance levels versus the previous gen, more talking about experiences, new experiences that can be delivered. Nice to see, by the way, new features coming in, you know, things like um, in NVIDIA I.O., which is part of direct storage, the DirectX API, and, um, oh, the, uh, I'm trying to think the latency name. What am I forgetting there? But Reflex. Reflex, Reflex yeah. yeah. So, anyways... You know, not only did they bring heavy-duty, powerful hardware, new hardware, but they brought software to go with it and features to go with it. Initial thoughts and expectations, Marco, and we'll we'll dive into any of the areas that that you see fit. <laughs> Initial thoughts were you, you can't help but be impressed. Uh, impressed. Jensen is a master at um at those kind of presentations, especially when he's working from his kitchen. That beautiful kitchen with the millions of spatulas. spatulas as, as Nathan yeah. points out. I don't know if anybody <laughs> noticed, but if you zoomed in on the spatulas, there was a little card on there, and I, if I'm remembering correctly, it says from your partners at Unity. So oh I really? Think, yeah. So it was like from the the guys that make the Unity game engine. But it was getting, a bouquet of color. Yeah, it was like they made a bouquet of spatulas. <laughs> it must be like an inside joke that somebody at Unity <laughs> came through with. But getting back to up. yeah, Ampere itself, you know, the numbers are are insane. Everything is nuts. Um, you know, you're looking at huge gains in in raw memory bandwidth. Probably gains in terms of uh, efficiency. There's probably additional compression in there we haven't learned about yet. Um, higher clocks, much higher core counts with the ability to <clears throat> do two shader ops per clock. Although I'm wondering if that's kind of where this shader count comes from. We'll talk about that later. Mm. The my only, you know, you also have, and again, this is according to NVIDIA. We're, we're kind of regurgitating what NVIDIA has told us because we haven't tested yet. But reportedly, really awesome, quiet, high efficiency coolers redesigned pcbs just literally uh they addressed everything from packaging to pcb to cooling to silicon to outputs like literally everything so it seems like this is going to be one of those monster generational leaps based on the information we have but there's lots of like now that if i'm I'm thinking about it a day later trying to digest it a couple of gotchas here and there that we have to you know dig into when we get samples and get to actually test it you know like power you have mm. a 2080 Ti is what a 250 watt card, right. and a 3080 is a 320 watt card, and the 3090 is a 350 watt card. Yeah. So although you know Nvidia is claiming a 1.9 percent, uh, 1.9x efficiency boost in terms of perf per watt, it is still higher power 
because, but the performances should also be much higher. That's where that efficiency gain is coming from. So right. there's lots of nuance that we have to dig into here. Yeah, and and that's usually the way, right? You get you get these, you know, you get the slideware, and you know, you uh, take it for face value. Obviously, they're they're not lying, but you know, under what conditions and under um, you know what uh, sort of scenarios are we achieving this level of performance? You know, what is a 350 watt GPU actually do in my system? You know, what kind of power supply do I need to su- need to support it? You know, we have that 12 pin new 12 pin power connector that uses existing eight pin dual eight pin feeds and cleans that cleans that up nicely into one connector. Um, so that's nice. But we also saw on the on the box, I think it was uh, Seasonic that that you know they they leaked early, and you saw the connector. It's right on the box, uh, 850 watt power supply recommended. Um, you know, are we talking that for a 3080? Mm, I think that might be a stretch. 3090, uh, maybe not. Maybe that's not such a stretch for a 3090. Um, what? Yeah, two things caught me that. I really liked about Ampere that that stuck out with me from the from the get go, and then we'll dive into some of the particulars in the actual GPU. But you mentioned the thermal solution, and what I what I've always thought I, I like dual axial fans like everybody else does. I think they, you know, they're cleaner, they're quieter, they push more air across the GPU itself, but they also, for the most part, contain that that air in, in the chassis, that warm air in the chassis. It gets exhausted by uh, chassis fans, but it doesn't go directly out the plate, the back plate, like a, like a blower style fan would like that, you know, traditional blower style setup from the previous, you know, it was, uh, whatever, um, not yeah, 1080 series, I guess on back anyways. <clears throat> um, now we have this push pull fan, which I thought was great. So now you've got dual axial still, but you've got that, you've got what to me seems like a really efficient thermal solution that's going to pull cool in for air in from the case, not only cool the GPU and exhaust it out the I.O. bracket, but exhaust it through the case fan as well. And you can see just lined up in the average, you know, horizontal case mount, this should work. Vertical case mount, I don't know. Uh, interesting how that m- might be an issue there. But horizontal case mount like that, yeah, that looks... That makes a lot of sense to me. I think you're gonna you're gonna have the benefits of that quiet dual axial fan pushing a lot of air with um, exhaust, better exhaust out of the system. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, mostly, yes. <laughs> so, so the, but like this is this is another one of those things. Now that I like so people watching, if you don't understand, like we're kind of like one man bands when we're pulling together articles, right? So when NVIDIA does a presentation like this, like I pulled down that video and had to snap slides from the video, but then after like, and then had to produce the article. So we're mad scrambling to do this, you know, basically live it's nuts. Yeah. So in the mad scramble, there's only so much deep thinking you can do. But after right. the fact, I was kind of going through the video frame by frame. And then two things I noticed, right. Mm. Um, for the 3090, I couldn't find a power connector on that card, right? So I think it was either a mock or there's something that we don't haven't seen yet on that. And then with regard, NVIDIA themselves in one of the slides calls the fan setup push-pull also. Right. But it's not really push-pull. It's two independent fans. One it's push, is push-push. It's push-push. Yeah. One is just going through. <laughs> so it does seem like a really well. smart design, though, because you have that the farthest away from the hot running components, that separate large, essentially radiator connected with heat pipes where the fan blows all the way through. So maximum efficiency on that. And then the hottest air is immediately getting exhausted. I would think this cooler is going to rock. Right. Just, it seems smart, but yeah, but it was just one of those, another one of those nuances where not exactly what it is, but that's how it was presented, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you could argue that they're pulling cool air in from the front um, and letting it get exhaust. That's a pull, letting it get, get exhausted out the, the chassis case. I mean, it's 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 semantics or nuance, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah, that was, I, you know, the biggest takeaway I had from, from that was, yeah, you're getting warm air exhaust immediately from the closest point on the GPU out the IO bracket, like the good old days without having to resort to the blower. And so you've got that, that, so that, that was my, my only thought. And then the other thing that caught my eye, so thermal solution looks, looks sound, right? And uh, yeah, you're right. I don't know where that power connector is. I, at first I thought backside of the card, you know, the back edge, maybe it's right in there. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Um, 
We'll find out soon. Yeah, we'll find um, out very soon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, the, the other thing that, that caught my eye was this G6X memory. So um, the, the world's fastest graphics memory is what they're calling it. Again, sounds great. You know, and, and if you listened to the, the phrasing, the wording from Jensen, from Jensen Huang, the CEO, this transfers twice as much data in a clock tick or twice as much data. It's twice as fast. How do they do that? Is it, is it you know, a higher clock speed? No. Is it higher bandwidth? No. It's something called PAM4 signaling. And did a little bit of research on that. And I dug in and it's like, okay, what this does is it effectively transmits twice as much data per clock tick. So you don't need higher clock speeds. The signaling, it transfers twice as many bits, effectively doubling the bandwidth. Sounds like some mojo. <laughs> yeah and i mean so but like that's this but is another this is another part where there's nuance right so i was yeah. I, I was working out the numbers on this too after the fact getting ready <laughs> for today so a 3090 has um this okay let me, let me back up jensen was kind of presenting with the 3080 in mind for yes. most of the stuff when he's talking yes. performance so yeah. you, there was a, a one point where he mentioned 760 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth that's the 3080 Right. If you do the math on the 3090 with the wider memory bus, it's mm. 936 gigabytes per second. Massive memory bandwidth. Jeez. But if you go yeah. to a 2080 Ti, 2080 Ti is 16, 616 uh, gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, at and the memory is running at an effective speed of 14 gigabits per second. So you see the 3080 at 19 gigabits per second, and you hear that detail about PAM4, and you're like, "Wow, it's faster, and it's going to do double." But right. no the effective data rate, I think, is uh, a quadrupling of the actual clock. So you're you're about 25% higher memory bandwidth than a 2080 Ti with a 3080 and 50% higher memory bandwidth on a 3090. Yeah. So what that means is if your memory bandwidth limited, that's how much faster they're going to be than a 2080 Ti. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we need to do. Uh, there, there was a time when, um, when the first uh, RTX cards, twenty series cards, were coming out, where we had Tap Tom Peterson on, and it was just pre-launch. You know, before the reviews went up. Yeah, and and we caused a lot we, of trouble with that. One. We caused a little, tr <laughs> a little trouble, and but we dug in with you know what to expect and what how how some of this mojo you know, that NVIDIA is, you know, putting together, uh, is working, you know, sort of, sort of under the hood, a little bit under the hood with as much as Tom could feed us without getting fired. And fortunately we didn't, we didn't get him fired, but he did go to Intel. He's over <laughs> at Intel now. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, I wish we could do that with, uh, with, uh, somebody else from NVIDIA. Maybe we can schedule that in a future cast, yeah. but we're going to be coming up pretty quick on uh, hardware availability. So, yeah. So a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, Joe yes, Max let's saying, do that. Won't the fans push hot air over the CPU? So technically, yes, right? You're going to push air all the way through that rear part of the heat sink towards your CPU. But again, that rear part is linked via heat pipes, and it's at really maximum efficiency. It's not blowing air through and then smashing into a PCB. So right. you're blowing air through just essentially a large radiator. So it is going to heat up a little, but... So you're pro I, you know, I would expect with air cooled TPUs, you're going to see a little bit higher temps because <clears throat> it's blowing right there. But if you have a good setup and your case is exhausting properly, we're, we're talking a min minimal thing here. I, I would bet. I'm sure yeah. there's going to be some YouTubers are going to throw a hissy fit because it's cool to be cynical and mean nowadays. Right. But it's it's really it's going to be a minimal minimal impact that's not going to affect anyone's experience unless their case cooling is crap. And then we have um, Blackhawk asking, um, is the 3090 a modern Titan equivalent from back in the day? Yes. So Jensen basically said, think of this new branding as RTX 3090 is the new Titan with the, mm. the new wrinkle that they're going to allow partners to sell the 3090. The right. Titans were selling so much better than they thought. They're like, you know what? We got to go wider with this. So they're going to allow partners to sell 3090s. Um, and the 3080 is effectively the you know successor to the 2080 ti 
uh, which you know, Dave. Let me mm. ask you. This, this yeah. is another another thing that just sort of mm. popped in my head. You know, now yeah. I had a, had a day to digest this. Notice no super no TI branding. I think Nvidia launched with these part numbers, knowing our DNA two was coming, and giving themselves breathing room with TI branding. I don't think these are as fast as these cards are going to get. I agree with you wholeheartedly. That was the <laughs> first thing that came to mind with me was there is no super. There is, you know, it's a 3080. We know a TI variant typically comes along at some later point. I think both of both of those options are uh, are on the table. You know, this is obviously unofficial and confirmed from NVIDIA, but this stands to reason with me as well. I would not disagree with you one bit. Yeah. <laughs> they... they it, they do what they, what they they do what they have to at the time, and this is plenty for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it should I'm be getting. plenty. Yeah. You know, ab absolutely. So, you know, looking at all of the numbers, right? You're yeah. talking. So, assuming the core counts aren't some special math because of the, you know, it has uh, you know dual execution units, so it can execute two uh, shader operations per clock. Yeah, yeah. You're looking at you know. Basically, so a 2080 Ti, if I remember correctly, was like a little over 13 teraflops of single position compute. Mm -hmm. A 3080 is 29.8, and a 3090 is 35.7. Even the 2070 is 20.4, right? Yeah. So huge increase in, in compute performance. Um, with the higher end cards, you have this huge increase in memory bandwidth. You have massive, uh, reportedly, we haven't tested, ray tracing and tensor core, huge performance improvements. You should have massive shader, you know, uh, performance improvements. It, it's just looking crazy. And then you you add on the other stuff. So, I was having a conversation with someone who was kind of ripping uh, Nvidia for just rebranding Nvidia Reflex as the you know low latency technology. I think mm. there's additional mm. mojo there we're going to learn about. Um, but you have you know essentially for games that support it, you, do, you know, an immediate responsiveness boost. And then the other cool features, like I personally never use like things like the Ansel for taking screenshots. But you know the, the broadcaster stuff, I think is going to be going to be you know really interesting for some people, especially like streamers that don't have pro setups. And you know that I'm going to pronounce it wrong. The Omnibus, what is it, Machinima? I'm probably <laughs> Machinima, yeah. yeah, yeah, Omniverse Machinima. You got it. That's it. Um, that stuff looks like really cool. I can see people creating some really cool B-roll with that stuff. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, that that was that was cool to me as well. Um, the, you know, the NVIDIA was a broadcast. Um, I think that's pretty cool as well. Or is it NVIDIA Studio? I think it's broadcast. Anyways, um, yeah, I was I was I was impressed with with those additional features. Uh, it's nice to see right away NVIDIA hopping on um, an early standards uh, train that, um, you know, g getting to market first with the capability, even though it's probably going to be available in my guess is Big Navi because it's part of, you know, we, we, we learned today that, uh, you know, Microsoft um, with direct storage, I'm speaking of now, um, has direct storage baked in or had engineered it initially for Xbox Series X to you know improve the the game load times in consoles. They are now rolling it out as part of the API for the desktop PC experience and Nvidia's hardware and software so, you know immediately supports it. So you got to hand it to Nvidia for for stepping right up, having that out to market first as a GPU for the desktop for the for for the PC master race so to speak. Um and then, yeah, you know, the other thing that came up in the thread, Marco, that on performance um, that's interesting is that you heard during the presentation and people latched onto it, you know, negatively that, um, you know, it, it, I think Jensen at one point said, the more you have a ray tracing, you know, the more you ray trace, the, the faster, the better the performance for Ampere. And so people are saying, yeah, that 2x the performance of a 2080 um, in the case of a 3080, is really if it's a heavily ray traced game. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily the case because if you look at the shader T flop throughput, right, 11 for Turing, you know, in, in its 2080 um, uh, iteration or its 2080 variant, excuse me, uh, 11, 30 for a 3080. So it's like almost three, it's 2.7x is what, what he had up on the screen. So He's saying 2.7x the shader throughput as well. 
Right, but you won't see like direct <clears throat> scaling in a game like exactly in line right. with that, especially with memory bandwidth not being doubled. Right. You know, so like it, it, like it, it's all it's all a balance. It's going to be faster in in ray tra- in raster, standard rasterization and ray tracing. Those two x numbers are going to be when you're you're using all the uh, you know all the RTX bells and whistles. You know, and we have a, a couple of comments also. Yeah. Let me just jump back in the chat. Yeah, uh, yep. You know, KW mentioning the HDMI two one support. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that. Tuan specifically pinged me for not mentioning that in our article, and I went and put it in because he's so looking forward to it because he has <laughs> one of those new LG TVs and and wants that you know 4K 120 um, with uh, with G Sync, and then we have uh, Joe mentions he thinks the 12 pin connectors in the fin stack. I know it's in the fin stack on the 3070. I thought that's where it would be on the 3090. I couldn't see it even slow mowing the video. So it's possible it was just the video wasn't high resolution enough and it's there. I'm not saying like some conspiracy. I'm just saying I think that the 3090 may have been a mock in the video. Um, so just it was just, you know, something interesting to talk about. We also have um, a sender. A, yeah, sender 81 there. saying direct storage will take a few months to implement. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, direct yeah. storage requires... Game devs. Direct X. Well, it has to be implemented Two. in Direct X, and game devs have to use it. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not going to come right away. But what, what I think is more interesting to talk about in regard to direct storage, you know, you had some folks saying how nothing's going to touch the PS5's new storage. Amazing, revolutionary. <laughs> well, guess guess what? Everything's going to touch it because yeah. the Xbox is going to do something similar, and now the PC will as well. And it and it makes perfect sense to me. It, it 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 you know honestly, if you think about the architecture, and I know there's it's it's an oversimplification when you look at the the you know especially the diagram that that Jensen put up where you're now loading um, data game data right from the SSD uh, bypassing the CPU complex and system memory right to graphics memory. Um, that that is um, you know over over PCI Express of course, but yeah, that is a huge hop in latency reduction that's taken out of the out of the mix it's a huge offload from the cpu to handle it as well and you know again it's it's like why didn't we do it this way to begin with well it's easier said than done um the gpu has to be able to handle that uh, that type of setup and obviously now they are beginning to handle that so it's it's great to see that i think i'm excited for that feature as well i'm excited for the ecosystem to move to that we all know, you know, and you and I have fast NVMe drives in our systems, but there's nothing worse than waiting for a level load. There's nothing worse than seeing that stitch as you're transitioning to a new area and you're gaming. Why are you smiling? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm smiling because, man, your video in lower third is looking good right now. I'm watching the feed <laughs> live. I'm like, yes, we have a, some good stuff happening today. Yeah. Okay. I just jinxed it, so things are going to crash yeah. now. No, no gremlins. <laughs> Don't be jinxing that. Yeah, Don't be marveling at it. But, yeah, no, we, we, we're trying to up our game here production-wise. And the other thing that uh, Ascender81 states is that Digital Foundries, he says Digital Founder, I assume he means Digital Foundries, proved that without ray tracing, RTX 30 is 75% faster than an RTX 2080 and 90% faster when, when ray tracing is turned on. I don't know how they prove that if cards aren't out, unless they got their hands on a card. I haven't seen their stuff yet. So, um, I mean, have if, you? So, um, no comment. <clears throat> yeah. um, <laughs> the, if, if you're doing the math on memory bandwidth and shader compute, like you can come up with guesses like this, right? So, if you're looking at a, a strictly a you know memory bandwidth limited situation, which is a lot of situations when you know high end gaming at high res, um, it's because the memory bandwidth is not double. There's no way it's going to offer double the performance with traditional raster. So you're going to see yeah. improvements like fifty percent, like seventy five percent. You know, and if you go back to previous gen, those were kind of the jumps. Like if I'm I'm trying to go for memory, but if you go from like a ten eighty to a twenty eighty, it's like sixty percent. Yeah, and you'll see that. But if you go from a 1080 running a ray tracing workload to a 2080 running a ray tracing workload, oh, it's 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 yeah, it's massive because those features aren't supported and it has to be done in software. So there's obviously nuance. Nvidia is going to hold their event and they're going to put their best foot forward. Obviously, right? It's not it's not anything crazy. No. But when we when we go and test cards officially and you see numbers um, when the embargoes lift. 
I don't think unless it's in ray tracing stuff, you're going to see the 2x stuff or even compute stuff. You know, some of the GP GPU stuff might show massive, massive improvements as well. Right, right. Yeah, we know tensor tensor throughput is beefed up substantially as well. 2.7x, I think the I think was the claim there. Um, yeah, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. Um, and and you're absolutely right. The proof is in the pudding um, when we actually are able to kick the tires and and spin this thing up. Um, and that's always the way. And I think it's been the way since the beginning of time. So nothing, nothing new there, but exciting. Right. exciting. Yeah, I mean, the fact remains, right? A 3080 yeah. at 699 is, is probably going to crush a f what, 2080 Ti is like the, the, the custom ones are still selling for like 1300 bucks. Yeah, man. So like 2000 series cards just got cheap and yeah. you're going to have killer performance with the latest feature set. Like, I, I get being cynical and wanting to pick stuff apart, but that's awesome. You know, it's that like is. you're about to have a $700 card that's faster than anything else on the market right now with more features, with more future proofing in terms of outputs and, and, and memory. Like there's good stuff here. Now, At almost uh, half the price. Right. right. So like I mean, there's there's good stuff anyways. happening. I, I get wanting to find the problems in it. And, you know, but this is this is a big step forward. Yeah. Agreed. 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 And uh, looking forward to seeing it. Uh, I tell you what, the 3070, which we haven't talked about, talk about a, a, a great performance sweet spot at 499 uh, and faster than a 2080 Ti is the claim. Yep. That's, I mean, the people are going to love that card. They're going to eat that card up. Um, Absolutely. Did we miss anything? Hold on. I'm just going I don't back. Think we did. And then okay. we can move on to Tiger Lake. But um, yeah, th it, Craig says 3070 is the killer deal. There you go. Um, yeah. I would agree, Craig. Joe Nexus, what do you got? Yeah, I think I think that's it uh, for now. Let's let's move on to Tiger Lake because that's fresh. Hopefully, <laughs> well, it's still <laughs> rolling around in our noggins is more the case, right? Um, Tiger Lake today, um, the the big fanfare from uh, fanfare from Intel. We had an architecture day with Intel where we did do a bit of a dive on Tiger Lake, but today was sort of the the consumer unveil, if you will. And we had a um, we had a headline up that said uh, Intel unveils entire Tiger Lake 11th gen family smokes rise in 4000 in gaming and creation. And that's a bold headline um, that uh, you and I tweaked on a little bit um, with Brandon, who wrote this up, did a great job punching it out uh, man, real time, like we always have to do drinking from the fire hose. Um, but what was the, the main thing for me? Well, two things here. You've got. Obviously, a full disclosure of the the, the speeds, feeds, and, and um, SKUs, you know, core counts, cache sizes, memory speeds, clock speeds, all that good stuff, all the models. I think there's, um, let's see, uh, five, no, looks like nine processors rolled out officially in the table grid um, on our article. Um, I'll drop this into the chat as well. So you get all the speeds and feeds and configurations for each of the models and the model numbers. And then you also got some very specific performance numbers from Intel versus a 4800U, which if you check it out, if you if you look it up, you do the research, it's an eight core processor, 16 thread that they're comparing to a four core, eight thread Tiger Lake CPU. They're showing it, smoking it in games, um, you know, in some cases, 2x the performance or nearly 2x the performance. Uh, I think they were showing, it uh, looks like grid in this case. We had, uh, but then they gave a, a, a benchmark graph of a, a number of games, everything from Battlefield 5 to Fortnite to CSGO. It's all in there, Dota 2, uh, GTA 5. Um, significant performance edge um, all across the board. Lots of goodness, a new brand. Uh, the Evo brand was unveiled as the next generation of uh, Project Athena. So laptops that have to meet a certain criteria in terms of performance. A lot of it's user responsiveness. Um, things like wake from sleep in a second. Um, so really well thought out, executed plan here with Tiger Lake, I think. Um, impressive stuff. What do you think, Marco? What are the takeaways here? What can we expect? And we've got, we got a lot more of to talk about in the future with this because we got you know uh, some press deep dives afterwards as well <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna Lots go where i'm gonna go where i hate to go i'm gonna yeah. bring up i'm gonna bring up apple oh yeah you know you know i was thinking about apples i was having a conversation with somebody recently and thinking about 
you know, people that were drinking from apples, you know, drinking apples Kool-Aid saying these, the ARM-based processors are going to be super fast, blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to explain to them, I don't think that CPU cores are going to be as fast as, uh, you know, an Intel processor, but they're going to have, you know, separate engines throughout the chips that accelerate a variety of workloads. Mm -hmm. And those things are going to be really fast. And in terms of the user experience, it doesn't matter. As long as the end user sees fast performance, that's what they're going to care about. So I think Apple pulls it off. And then looking at Intel's presentation today, all right, mm -hmm. we know single thread IPC is super strong, right, for Tiger Lake. We know it. Yeah. But we also know uh, it, AMD's got double the uh, cores in a similar form factor right now. So right. you're not going to overcome double the amount of cores in a straight CPU multi-threaded workload. Right. Lots of the stuff we saw today from Intel was using either, you know, AVX2, VNNNI, specifically a GPU test, which is perfectly fine. Like the, the Gen 12 I Iris XE GPU in that form factor is going to kick ass. It's going mm -hmm. to be very good. You're going to be able to play 1080p games on an Ultrabook. Right. Um, the experience and, you know, the responsiveness of a Tiger Lake system is going to be very, very good. The AI performance, mm -hmm. like I, it was funny, one of the workloads they showed in the presentation was Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI with yeah. Nero, you know, doing. So I use uh, Topaz Labs Denoise AI and Gigapixel all the time. Um, I have an AMD system and I'm running it on on a graphics card for acceleration. It's mm. way faster on Intel because of the Open Vino and the support they have for that software. Mm. Which, even though theoretically, if you're doing you know pure compute, it shouldn't be, but you have that engine to make it faster. Mm. So overall, I think the experience is going to be extremely, extremely good with Tiger Lake. I'm really looking forward to it. Some of the interesting stuff that came out today was in terms of power, and how you have you know three completely separate clock and power domains for core on core, and I, I think GPU. I'm probably forgetting exactly, but you know you're looking at a higher performance much more feature rich platform um, with a really strong graphics engine for an integrated low power solution with a huge push for innovative, nicer form factors. I, I'm, I have, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to put out these positive vibes. I'm being very positive today. I think it's going to have a really good impact on the mobile space. We saw what happened with Ultrabooks. You know, we were in the like the netbook phase where you know Windows Mobile was mobile devices were getting murdered, and Microsoft kind of with the Surface and their initiatives and Intel with Ultrabooks said, "No, that's enough of this crap. Let's do some really nice machines." And look where we are now. We have right. beautiful laptops. If Project Athena and now with the new Evo branding with kind of like Project <clears throat> Athena 2 with the second wave, if we get another push forward like that, it, it can only mean good stuff in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would agree. On, on the performance side, you, you made an, an interesting distinction that, you know, we sort of, you know, cast away casually. But, um, you know, they are showing, they were showing some performance metrics, a lot of gaming and content creation. Uh, again, that four core, eight thread versus eight core, 16 thread chip. Um, however, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're picking real world applications, which is great. Um, we also saw things like, I think we saw Adobe Premiere. They were rendering Adobe Premiere. Um, there were a couple of different Adobe applications. It was nice to see the mainstream traditional content creation apps being utilized for, for performance benchmarks showing the time to finish that kind of approach i think you're right if you you know obviously if you fire up a you know a cinebench 20 run obviously that eight core chip is probably gonna gonna beat it um but yeah the the single core ipc here which is hugely important especially for the laptop laptop experience for that responsiveness is is huge i think i i believe the number's 20 percent gain in ipc is that is that right am i recalling that correct um, twenty percent gain in single thread, but not single in IPC thread. because higher okay. clock also. Right, 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 right. Yeah, good point. Yep. So, and then that's that's the other thing that occurred to me with Tiger Lake is it's all about that um, that power curve responsiveness, that ability to hit higher clocks at lower voltage. I mean, that's that's huge. That's that that power envelope, that whole dynamic of maximizing the power curve in a laptop is huge. When you have, you know, a desktop, you know, eight core, you know, 12 core, whatever, you know, how many core chip, 
you know, lit up. It's plugged into the wall. You're not, you're, you're just pumping that thing full of juice. You don't care. And a laptop on battery power, which is the way most folks want to use it, that's huge. And so, um, yeah, they, they, they were leaning on that and as they should, because that, and, and that's what occurs to me is that's the real world application and use mo the use case that a laptop needs to perform its best in. Yep. So absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we had a couple of comments quick. KW is asking, <clears throat> can we ask Intel, will Pentium and Celeron SKUs uh, support AVX2? Um, funny you mentioned us asking Intel stuff. We may have a really interesting Q&A upcoming with uh, someone very high level at Intel. Yes. And yes, we can absolutely ask that. We may may even have this person on live and you can ask him directly. Um, so hoping that happens sooner rather than later. Um, we have Nathan mentioning, okay, yeah. So Intel beating AMD for gaming, that's because of that single thread advantage and you know, yeah. um, as well. Two on saying, side. bring back the UMPC and Tiger Lake compute sticks. <laughs> um, Come by the site uh, tomorrow and see some interesting uh, Lakefield numbers. Lakefield could obviously be in a compute stick. If Intel sold enough, they'd probably be one already. Right. Um, but they'll be, I think, you know, there's third parties. I got a couple of like random manufacturers that I've never heard of reach out for these, you know, ultra small form factor PCs based on new Intel stuff. I wonder yeah. if one is Lakefield. I got to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should, we should have some numbers going up very soon on a Lakefield based product, which will be the first time we've actually tested it in our labs here. So, um, yeah, uh, interesting stuff. Stay tuned for that um, probably tomorrow, I think, if we get clear. Hopefully. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we somehow not, find time to proofread it and publish it. <laughs> well, if it's and if it's not tomorrow, it's next week because Friday is going to be a – everybody's going to – in our way. It's not going to be a great news day. That's my that's my guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, I think I think that about closes it out. We will be giving away some pretty amazing stuff in the week. Are we, were we done with Tiger Lake, or am I jumping too soon? I think I, we were pretty much done. I think we're good. I was going to bring up if anyone had a question about the Core i3s having Intel UHD graphics not oh. being listed as as XE. Um, I got clarification. Um, below 80 execution units, they're not going to brand it uh, Iris XE. They're just going to call it UHD, but it is still Gen 12 in the latest graphics engine. Um, and I, are we missing anything from the chat? I don't think so. Yeah. Nope, we're good. All right. So, and with that, yeah. So, again, stay tuned in the, in the weeks ahead. We'll be giving away a pretty nice killer gaming rig powered by AMD, actually. Um, Chris is working on a review right now. Chris, as soon as you get close to daylight on that sucker, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. There it is right there. We got one of those. It's an EK Waterblocks liquid or fluid gaming system from EK. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just getting that review punched up. Once we get the review live, then we're going to announce the giveaway of an identical system. It won't be the one Chris beat on. Guaranteed it'll be brand new, fresh with the plastic you can peel off. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> and that about does it stop by hothardware.com where you can find us on the web twitter.com slash hot hardware youtube.com slash hot hardware vids or hot hardware hit thumbs up subscribe um because we want to have you with us and send out you know get those notifications when we go live every we try every wednesday at 5 30 that's what we try and do we don't always hit that depending on workload that's what we try and do right marco we, we try that's the perfect way to uh to put it <laughs> all you can do is try, try again. Dang That's it. it. That's it. That's all. And uh, yeah, and uh, we will have a Patreon up soon. We're going to do that so you can support us other ways because uh, digital publishing and independent publishers these days are fighting a battle that's um, pretty serious in the trenches, man. It's, yeah, man. Uh, you know, if anybody yeah. has has input on that, if you have ideas, if you say, hey, if if you know x publication did this i would support them through patreon we would love those ideas oh i have a visitor why don't you come over here for a second come oh, oh wait a minute uh, sophie's running away she oh ran away. sophie come so, on come here come on yeah she <laughs> now she, she's being shy she's being but yeah shy. so if you have ideas on on what you think would be interesting um for perks on a patreon obviously we're going to do patreon uh, giveaways for for patrons directly but if you have other stuff that you think would be interesting that we could implement, let us know. We'd like to be creative here and do something different because we're, we're, we didn't jump on the Patreon bandwagon at all early. Like we're literally just setting it up. So if you have ideas, we'd love to hear them. 
Yeah, and the reason we didn't do that is because we wanted to bring value, right? We didn't just want to put out the tip jar. We want to do some some special things. And uh, so, yeah, let's get creative and uh, and do that. Cool. And, uh, yeah, um, follow us on the web, and uh, we'll see you next time. And thanks so much for stopping by.